it's Star Queen here. Uh, my name, actual name is Elle. Welcome to my very first tutorial. I had a couple of people requesting a crossover tutorial, um, so I thought I'd give one a go. I've never done one of these before, so do bear with me. Now, I like editing crossovers an awful lot, um, mainly with historical and fantasy footage, um, but sometimes modern footage too um, and the reason I like it so much is because I'm a writer I'm a storyteller and I feel like with crossover editing you can really get to grips with telling a story it's very creative you've almost got to plan it out in your mind first or at least have an idea of what you want to do with it um, so hopefully with this very short introduction video, I will go through the basics of crossover editing and make sure if you want to see more like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, now I'll assume you have a basic knowledge of the editing program that you use already. Um, I'm not gonna be going to the basics of video editing with a particular program or video editing itself but there are plenty of good tutorials out there and I'm going to pop a couple of links in the description so just check those out um, if you are a beginner and getting started um, but I edit with Final Cut Pro which you can see here this is my last project uh, which was a multi crossover and it was um, I Scare Myself and I actually used original characters. So for those of you unfamiliar with this, um, original characters or OCs, as we like to call them in the biz, um, what we do is we create our own stories. So we might be fiction writers, um, we might be, uh, we like to do, may like to do role play, um, we may create a character from out of a, a fandom and create a new character to go in there. Um, so what we do is we fan cast them. So we pick characters uh, from fandom sites, like, for example, Lord of the Rings or the White Queen, um, even the Vampire Diaries, anything like that. And we use that face for our own character. So crossover editing and original character editing are very similar in that respect. Um, I'm gonna show you this one as an example. And um, I'm just going to talk you through a couple of things that you might need to know before you get started. So first of all, rule number one, know your software. Whether you're using Sony Vegas, whether you're using iMovie, whether you're still on Windows Movie Maker, I started out on Windows Movie Maker, or whether you're on Final Cut Pro, or whether you're on Premiere, whatever you're on, know it. There are plenty of tutorials out there and practice makes perfect. I cannot stress this enough. I've been on YouTube for 12, 13 years. It might even be more than that. Um, I'm old, guys. And you just gotta practice. Um, I started out on Windows Movie Maker and then I moved into Final, uh, I moved into Sony Vegas and then Sony Vegas Pro. Um, and then I moved on to Final Cut and in work, I'm now using Premiere, I'm trying to teach myself how to use that. Um, I'm definitely one of these people who learns by doing. So I think you guys should do the same and just practice. The second thing is make sure you've got good quality footage. Again, this is really important just for having your videos look good um, and standing the test of time. Um, as I said, um, I'm learning Premiere in work at the moment, but I've also had to put something together for work in iMovie. And iMovie is basically like a, a slightly watered down version of Final Cut. And I was editing with really good quality footage that I'd shot myself in work. And do you know what? I got a really good video out of it, if I'm honest. I was really pleased with it. And if your video if, if your footage is good enough quality it will take on a decent colouring as well and it'll just be easier to play with and it'll just look good um, and there are plenty of places you can get good quality footage from um, ask around you know try and get what you want I keep my footage on an external hard drive you may wish to consider doing that as well but that is totally up to you the third thing I think is quite important is choosing the right song. 
Um, I'm not by any means going to tell you what kind of music you should be using for your videos or what, even what song you should be using. I would never do that. Um, it's a totally personal choice. Now, for me, I like to try and use a song that I like, number one. Uh, and number two, maybe isn't that popular. I like to use ones that are a little bit different. So what I've been doing for a while now is I've got a Spotify account and I listen to stuff on it. I listen to things I like. And then what Spotify does, it starts to learn what kind of music you like. Every week, it will come up with a discover playlist. It will make a playlist for you on a Monday morning. And that will be active for a full week and it will suggest songs that it thinks you might like based on what you've listened to. So this is actually how I find the majority of the songs I edit to. Now I'll put a link to the playlist that I've got at the moment on Spotify in the description so you can have a look. Please feel free to have a look and take any inspiration you want from there. Um, it's called a writing playlist but honestly any new song that I hear and I think that might be good for writing or that might be good for editing too, I put it into that playlist and I can come back to it at any time. And to be honest, I might hear a song to begin with and think, I like it, it's all right. I'll put it into the playlist and then while I'm listening to the playlist, while I'm writing or, you know, on my commute, I might find that I really like it and I might find I have an idea for a crossover video or an OC video or any type of video. Um, that actually is actually what happened with my most recent video, I Scare Myself. Um, it was um, on my Discover playlist on Spotify last Monday. Uh, and then I listened to it on repeat and decided I wanted to edit to it. This is mostly how most of my videos come about, is me finding a song, becoming obsessed with it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. So yeah, um, music is important and having the right sort of music and the right song for the type of video you want to do um, I quite like epic music, things that things that maybe quite got a little bit of a dark edge to them, um, and ones with like really good vocals and really good lyrics. That's what I like. So once you've uh, got all that in place, you've almost then got to choose what you want to edit, and you don't necessarily have to have a very good idea about what you want to do. You can just have a play around with it. For me personally, I tend to get a little bit of inspiration and then I'm like, I just have to run with it. Um, otherwise I, I tend to lose it. Um, so for what happened with I Scare Myself was I felt like I wanted to showcase some of my original characters uh, in one video. So I'm just running through them here so you can see. Um, and I, what I would normally do is um, in Final Cut, I would find the footage I want, I would have a look through it, um, and I would drop it into the timeline here, and then I'd line it all up, I'd put in any transitions that I want, um, if I don't want a transition I just leave them together, um, and you can see here you've got your music track here, I've got my intro, I've got my clips coming up here, um, so yeah I'd sort of assemble all of that first. And in terms of crossovers, what I like to do is do it in scenes. So if we jump ahead here to, we've got Shana and Caspian here, played by Sibylla Dean and Tom Weston Jones. Um, we've got a scene of him sort of walking in on her and them gazing longingly at each other for a little bit. And then again, we've got Clara and Nathaniel here. And again, they're sort of gazing longingly at each other. So that's what I like to work in. Um, even if I'm just doing a, a whole video on one crossover couple, I will work in scenes and I will craft it around that. So just think, think about what clips will look good together. So if one character is outside, make sure the other one is. If one character's in a dark room, make sure the other one is as well. I mean, you can play around with the lighting, but really in terms of background, uh, if you don't want to be doing too much masking, this is a new, really neat little trick. So as you can see here with Clara and Nathaniel, they're both sort of in a dark room. You see that there? And I've added some sort of gentle zoom on them to make them look pretty. Um, and again here, we've got 
Leander here and we've got Briar and they're both outside. Okay, let's see how that works. Fabulous. Um, now, if there is a logo on your clip, for the love of God, crop it out. If there's black lines at the top or at the sides, crop them out. Most editing softwares do allow you to do this and I'll just zoom in on one of them just to give you an example. Uh, let's see if we can find one that did have a logo on it originally. Right, Pride, Prejudice and Zombies here. This did have a logo on it. So if we can get the marker on it. So if we click onto that, uh, Final Cut has you've got your cropping tool here. And if we click onto that, you'll see the crop that I've made. So the original clip actually has black lines here. So I've gone on to crop and I've cropped them out. Um, Final Cut will actually try and identify how much you need to crop for you, which is quite handy. And then you just crop it out. Um, other softwares you need to do it manually, but it's quite easy to do. Do that. If there's a logo, zoom in on it, crop it out, and you're just left with your clip. Equally, move around a little bit. Um, if there's if there's another person, and say you wanted to get rid of this lady here, if you really didn't want her there, you could move it that way slightly. You could zoom in a little bit so she wasn't there. Um, so just think about that when you're lining up your clips. And remember if, if they're not, you want them to be looking at each other, right? You want Clara and Nathaniel to be looking at each other here. If he was facing the other way, you need to flip the clip. So again, you'd go back into, so in Final Cut, you'd come into, um, into here. And what you'd do is you'd just flip the clip round. Actually, no, in, fi in Final Cut, what you would do is, You'd go into your effects and you would type in flipped. This is slightly different on each editing program. And all you do is you drag that onto your clip and that would flip it round for you. Um, in Sony Vegas, I believe, if you open up the clip and you right click, I think you can flip it horizontally, vertically, whichever way, which way you want to do it. You can do that there. Um, and it's handy as well to make sure that they've got a similar sort of line of sight about them to make it look like they actually could be looking at each other. You, you know, you want to make this look believable. You want to tell a story with it. So look, Bri is sitting down here. Leander is looking down. So that's handy because she's sort of looking up a little bit. So it's just something else to bear in mind. Now for masking, I've got a mask here. And again, it's off Briar and Leander. Now, don't feel, if you're doing crossover to editing, that you have to put in loads of masks. I don't. I just like to make, make it look like the characters could be from the same show or the same movie. Um, but it's nice now and then to throw in a mask. Um, it just helps it make, it make it look a little bit more believable. Um, so this is the one I've got here. Now, obviously, these are, these are from two different shows. Okay, and the idea is to try and make them look like they're part of the same show. And if we click onto, let's drag the pointer. So we've got the clip here, but what I've done in a different file, I lined up my two clips and what I did was I put one over the other, made sure that it was that they were the same length made sure again look they're both outside they've both got a sort of floral floral background to them and what i did was made sure that one was facing one way one was facing another in this clip here he's actually talking to somebody else and again with jodie coma here she was actually talking to somebody else so it it lines up pretty well i mean it's don't get me wrong it's not perfect but it doesn't have to be so you line them up on top on top of one another and then you'd use your masking tool. Now for final cut, what you would do is you'd type in masking, masking, oh, masks, there we go. And draw, you drag that onto your clip and you click draw mask. And then what you would do is you would add control points through. And then once you've selected the bit that you want to mask out, 
there are some other tools that you can play around with to feather that um, to move the points around and you see here you can actually tell if you, if you look closely enough that these are two different scenes in addition this quad this footage here is better quality than this footage which is why it's important to have good quality footage um, I need to update my rain footage clearly um, so yeah, make sure your colours match up, make sure your scenes match up and feather to soften. I can do another video on masking if you really want, but there are some masking kings and queens out there. I'll put some links in the description so you can have a look for yourself at how the pros do it. So once I've done that, what I would do is I would render it as a single clip because then when you put your colouring on it, it's not gonna highlight that feathering line because some colorings will do that, which we don't want. So once I've done it as my, my clip, I will import it back into this project. And this is the finished clip here. I've put a, I've put Ken Burns on it and all Ken Burns is, is a slight zoom. So you can see it sort of, if I move from there, it zooms in slightly there. And then I've put my coloring on at the end. Now, if you don't like if you're not completely happy with the mask that you've made as I am 99% of the time and I don't have the patience to make it perfect put a little overlay over it show a little text you know <laughs> distract your viewer from the terrible um the ter your terrible masking skills I'm not talking about yours I'm talking about mine next what we'll do is we'll move on to voiceovers now I think these can really make a crossover video. I never used to use voiceovers at all um, and then I started using them in collab parts and now I wouldn't be without them. Even if you only use a handful, I just think I just think they add another human touch to whatever you're editing. So what I would tend to do is I tend to try and know my footage um, even if I haven't necessarily watched all of the shows and the movies that I edit with, I will skim through the scenes that I want to use and see if I can pick out a little sound bite that I want to use. Um, and then it's a matter of making them sound as though they could be talking to each other. And this is quite easy to do once you get into the hang of it. Um, so, for example, So right near the beginning of the video, um, we have Jodie Comer in The White Princess saying, um, would that be enough for you? Don't you want someone who burns to be with you? Okay. And then we go into Rain and we find, um, we find James, Mary's brother. You can see the logo there. Look at the logo. Um, you find him talking about, um, you know, my life is complicated. Um, and again, you can do it with things like declarations of love, you can do it with declarations of hate. You know, um, these shows and movies that we watch are all very, very dramatic in their own way. So it's just a matter of picking out bits that you can manipulate a little bit and make it sound as though people are actually talking to each other. Um, I like to keep it a bit of a mix of a character talking on screen so over here we've got Ed Splares from Beowulf, we've got him shouting, that's an on-screen one, so it lines up with the video. And then underneath as well, I've got one voiceovers that go over the video. So this is the clip we're actually seeing, but this is the scene that's got the voiceover. So I like to mix it up a little bit. You can choose one or the other, or you can do both. It is completely up to you. Now, finally, once I am happy with the basics, so the clips, the transitions, the voiceovers, the masking, I know that sounds like a lot. Um, once I'm happy with all of that, I might add in some text. So I sometimes put lyric text. I sometimes put uh, text for the voiceovers. Um, you don't have to use any text at all. It's totally up to you. Um, I like to mix it up a little bit with the fonts I use. So I would maybe use one simple font and one cursive font. 
that sometimes looks quite nice. Um, don't make it too big, lower the opacity a little bit. So if you click onto one of these in Final Cut, for example, uh, you can change your text there, you can change your font, your size, um, your tracking, um, which is how far apart they, uh, the, the letters are from each other. Um, and you can also change the opacity. So you see here, mine's set to about 50%. Don't make, if you're gonna use text, I'm gonna be honest, don't make it too big because it will just distract everybody uh, watching your video. Um, so yeah, but it's totally your goal. And then once I'm done, as in the very last thing I will do is add in my colouring because when you add in a colouring, it tends to make your video editing program go. It doesn't like colourings. Um, now I have not got to grips with colourings on Final Cut yet, so I tend to use pre-made ones. Now there are loads out there for Sony Vegas, there are less out there for Final Cut. Um, there's Mary Stewart who does fantastic ones for Final Cut, there's White Canary, Canary Colourings, there's Kitty, um, I'll put a couple in the description box again for you. Um, but if you know how to make a colouring, you do it yourself. Um, of Durin's Folk, my very good friend Kim, she makes beautiful ones in Sony Vegas and I just wish I could use them, but I can't because Sony Vegas does not run on a Mac. But never mind, I'm completely not bitter about that. Um, so yeah, what I will do is I will add in my colouring. Um, on Sony Vegas, you can actually add a colouring to a whole track, um, or you can add it to your clips one by one. Uh, in Final Cut, you have to add them one by one, but that's fine. Um, some say it actually makes the colouring sharper as well if you add it to a whole um, clip by clip. Now my, my colourings are in here. I've got Mary Stewart colourings here. These are freaking gorgeous. Got to make sure you have the right plugins. I haven't got the right plugins for these. I tried making some of my own. As you can see, they're a bit all over the place. Got some more there. And you would just drag and drop them in. And then once you're happy with all that, so your footage, your music, clips, your manips, your masking, your cropping, your transitions, colouring, text, overlays, all of that, you can you can render the damn thing and all you do in Final Cut is go to export. And that's it. Now I appreciate this has been a bit of a whistle stop tour. Um, if anybody would like to see any of these steps in a little bit further detail, um, just hit me up in the comments. If you'd like to see more like this as well, if you'd like to see more tutorials, we can certainly talk about that possibility. And also if you have any suggestions for, for other videos, any other tutorials you wanna see, let me know. And I hope you guys have an epic weekend. So ta-ta for now.